we respect each other. I think it's the most important, you know. I have watching his fights in the final of the open class, you know, since forever. So, and everybody think like, ah, oh, you you won the world, so you won the absolute. You should like just stop the fight, you know. No man, come on. I'm not gonna hide myself behind a medal, you know. I'm here, I competed just 20, 20, 22 years old, so of course I'm gonna fight, you know. Winning or losing will be great, you know. Of course, respect. I respect him a lot, but I will do my best to win. You know? So that's why I'm training. That's why I do everything that I'm doing. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Chekimat out of Huntington Beach, California. His name is Marcus Almeida, but the world knows him as Bushesha. I think my personality is showing the mat, you know, clearly a yeah, point is how calm I am when I'm fighting. And, you know, I'm a very laid back person. And of course, the situation that you have to be a bit more aggressive in fighting or in life, you know, you can never just sit back and let the world run, uh, goes around you. But in dealing, you know, I, I dealing with the problems in life, I very, very rarely as really stress myself out that suddenly I change for you know very aggressive I lose control and I think that pretty much reflects when I'm fighting and I can be in, the, in a very dangerous position I can be getting really tapped out very rarely I explode in a way that I lose control of the fight and everything I do everything I try to do I try to see and have a feeling of what's going on have a, some kind of control in a way that I'm not just gonna explode and lose control of a, you know of what's going on around me and then suddenly in an even worse position than you were before. I think that's the same thing, you know, in, in life. Ladies and gentlemen, from London, England, one of the most dangerous men alive, Under 15 pounds heavier. Yeah. Again, this is really interesting matchup. This young gun in here trying to submit Roger Gracie. Looking for the single. He got the cut up. Very nice. To the back. Wow. Right away. Roger neutralizes beautifully. And I think that's going to be key for Buchecha to be successful, to continue to push the pace here. I don't think he wants to get into a 20-minute... 20-minute battle with Roger Gracie. Who was that guy in, in Roger Gracie's corner? <laughs> the legendary Henzo Gracie is uh, in Roger's corner over here. Came all the way from New York to help keep it real. Bouchesha, beautiful shot in the double leg. Very nice. I just watched these guys on the edge of the mat. Restart in the center here to make sure these guys don't fall off the platform. Very important safety. On the concrete floor. About eight feet. Restart in the same position. Bouchesha is very dangerous here. His balance is outstanding. Let's see him go to work and try to pass. Nice 
Nice knee split, nice underhook. Roger trying to turn up. Let's go past there. And he's got his leg trapped, so there's not going to be much back mount here. You can see Bouchesha's right leg is trapped between Hajar's legs, making it so that um, he can't step over and put the hooks in. And little by little, you'll see Hajar start to create more of an angle where he can face his opponent and either recompose the guard or come out into a single leg quite possibly. What does Bouchesha need to do here? It's tough. He might have to, uh, if he's going to free that leg, he's got to basically turn his hips facing us, completely drop his right hip and slide the knee out knee first. He's not going to be able to get that foot out unless he turns his hips and drops it to the mat. But while he does that, he risks giving his own back. So he's really got to be careful to make the right grips before sliding his knee. Kavaka, the head coach of Checkmat, intention, intensely watching his student on top. How's your neutralizer? Great get it. You know Hajar wants the takedown so he can work his pass and do his thing. Hajar also loves the close guard. He has great, like, great attacks, really strong legs. He works it real high. Bouchesha coming up the center again. Nice knee slice here. Oh, nice cross grip on the sleeve and hugging the back. This could be very dangerous. Now you see Bouchesha switching in for the knee bar. Hodges triangling his legs to prevent any extension of the leg. Very interesting. You see Hodges sweep over the top here and come on up. Oh, he's got to watch out for this entanglement. If Bouchesha can unlock the leg, we're looking in trouble here. Very interesting. He's going to look for the toe hold out here if he can get one. And Hajar just wants that top position. Ooh, toe hold. Here it is. Roger kicks out. Extending his leg fully to prevent any toe hold. Very dangerous. Very dangerous here. Ah. Wow. Oh, no. This is very bad. <clears throat> this could be very, very dangerous here. But Hajar has not been submitted. Since Blue Belt. Wow, he was nice. Wow. Let's go tomorrow, though. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, you're looking to pass. There it is. Interesting. A lot of footlocks today, but no finishes. A lot of feet are going to be feeling it tomorrow. We've seen some great patience of guys in some really bad positions escaping, and Hodger just did that. Hodger, look at it. Hodger has a overhook on the ankle here, and he's grabbing the belt with his right hand up the center. And he's kind of basically neutralizing Bouchesha's outside hook here. And you'll see Hodger look to advance the high grip on the lapel. Yep. And now Hodger's arm will start to creep down and grab the bottom pant leg if he can. He wants the bottom knee and the front lapel on the same side. If he gets those two grips, you'll start to see him really put some heavy shoulder pressure to pin the legs together. Bouchesh is doing a very good job with his left knee right now, keeping the spread so that uh, Hajar cannot pin the knees down into the same side. They're approaching the red line here. Six minutes down in the match. Nice yeah, underhook from Bouchesh, but Hajar has a counter by a deep overhook on the knee. Stubborn on this front side lapel control here. And you see his right hand really trying to work around Bouchesha's leg and onto the bottom knee control. He's coming on the back. Bouchesha, nice folding. 
Now, Hodger, switching everything to this side, you'll see him with his right-handed lapel control up top. And watch his left hand look to get control of Bouchesha's bottom leg. And with inside leg control, and same side lapel control, he'll start to creep around. Pace is slowed a little bit here. Pace is slowed a little bit. Bouchesha is not trying to activate any sweeps at this point. He's really just trying to respect Hodger's grip advancements and, um, and prevent the pass. Bouchesha here working the upside down guard. And now you'll see Roger try to advance his lapel grips from upside down. And then, see, look at his right hand. Mm -hmm. under. And now he's trying to clear. Ooh! Whoa! Incredible balance right there. Roger used his head. Oh! Do it again. Here it comes. Not this time. Bouchesha now on the turtle. Going through. Oh, nice timing. Oh. That was passed. ridiculous. That was the clutch moment of the entire match so far. Bouchesha rolled, and most of the time he rolled as an arm there to block you. Roger purposely didn't put the arm in the way, so Bouchesha's roll ended up touching nothing, which meant he ended up flat on his back. So this is the, the this is what we see in the sequence with Hodger Gracie. If Bouchesha Bouchesha's head out, here comes the back mount again. Hodger looking for his double underhooks. You see how he has his half Nelson right here, or this quarter Nelson. He's going to try to work it now. And try to fold Bouchesha back onto his back. Let's see. All the wrestlers out there are like, yeah, fold him. There it is. That's the pressure I'm talking about. He's pulling his head under this chest. Oh, is that it half sweep guard? Again. It's a half over there. Oh, it's a half, yeah. So the leg is trapped. He's not, ooh. Yeah, Hodger's very determined to keep this top position and make his pass happen. Richardson has to be spending a lot of energy like that trying to put Hodger in the air. Oh, yeah. Each one of those, for sure. Each one of those. No question about it. You only have so many sort of. And now is where Hodger will patiently make his guard break and his pass. Bouchesha with the cross grip. Guys slowing down a little bit here. Both of them taking some deep breaths. Time, especially after an exchange like that. It's amazing how in jiu-jitsu, even the grip, just the individual grip, as soon as you grab it, is so telling. And how... Bouchesha is changing his grips right now, and with each modified grip, Hajar redistributes his weight or his posture so that whatever Bouchesha has planned can't be activated. It's incredible how, whether it's a cross grip, a same side grip, a lapel grip, a sleeve, a sleeve and a lapel, a sleeve and a leg, each one of those means something totally different. And to the viewers out there, it doesn't look like much if they're not jujitsu students. But right now, for example, the sleeve and the opposite leg, this is obviously a tip sweep over to this direction here, to Hajar's right. And Hajar now, as a result... Obviously, obviously to you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he grabs the leg. <laughs> That's true. He grabs the leg. He has the, same, the left opposite sleeve. What he looks to do is hit Hajar right there. There's the tip. Yep. But again, Hajar saw that a thousand miles away. He was already spreading his knees, sitting back on his heels, and leaning in the direction of the inside, uh, the incoming leg. So Bouchesha tried it, failed it, and now he'll go for the cross grip and lapel control here, which is more of an arm bar setup. You know what I mean? So, Incredible. How much is going on here with just these small grips? I'm surprised because Hodger really doesn't usually spend this much time. He's usually passed by now. Bouchette's are really doing a great job of maintaining his guard. However, Hodger also doesn't have to fight for 20 minutes very often. This is true. You know what I mean? So he's thinking, okay, let's get into the water. But let's I play a little. As we talk, and then to let's these, cook some sushi. As we, <laughs> as we talk to <laughs> now, these hold guys. Hold on, correct it. You don't cook sushi. <laughs> sushi. Yeah. I just let that go. As you talk to these guys, they say they really haven't changed their training that much. And it, obviously, you know this. It's not uncommon for guys to be training for an hour. That is true. That is true. In the academy, you know they let it rip. A little, little frustration on, the, on Hodger's face now. Let's see if these guys can open up and push the pace. 
Chesha, this over the shoulder grip right here on the armpit is very much of a kind of a stalling control just to basically prevent the posture and start to uh, set you up for the high guard and possible grip advancements. And let's it go. Now you'll see Haja controlling Bushesha's sleeve. And there we go. Down. Here he goes. Broken. Bushesha looking across around. Haja with the knee split. And here he comes around the front. Have you had the chance to train with these guys, Hunter? Negative. Ooh. Oh! Full sweep. There's Hodger trying to catch this elbow hug arm bar in, in exchange. But if the angle looks a little wrong, there it is. Oh, let's see Bucetra trying to pass. This is not something we see happen very often. It's not very common, yes. But then again, trying to get that body, body lock. But then again, Hodger's defense and, and submission. Great job, Bucetra, keeping the background right here. Hodger's. Not any imminent danger because both arms are underhooked. There is no overhook, so there's no choke just yet. But right now, Bouchesh is not trying to submit. He's trying to sink to both hooks. Not for the points, but for the control. And now you see Bouchesh advance, but now he's going to go to guard. Ooh, he could have kept those underhooks and advanced around the back. But now Hodger back where we came from. 6.45 remaining in the match. Beautiful exchange. guys look tired yeah they're both definitely feeling it but I expect to see how you pick up the pace now he wants to go for the submission for sure Bushesha, what a beautiful reversal right that half butterfly elevation was just it was beautiful how slow it was and we all knew it was going but then we thought Haji was gonna do one of those headstands and come back and then over the top he went just goes to show the incredible power but Hodger's no lightweight, you know what I mean? No, not at all. Bushesha has a 15-pound advantage, but man, he used that single hook to lift all of Hodger's body weight when Hodger was in no way trying to help the process. He was sprawled. He was Here we go. Hodger standing up again to try to pass. Bushesha underhook sweep. Hodger counters it. Oof, spinning over the leg lock. Yeah, Bushesha loves these toe holds. Hodger has the lapel under his leg, looking for the takedown. Hodger's not trying to go down here. You see, you see, oh, nice break of the grip. Hodger had the lapel controlled underneath. Hodger pulls guard. Looking for the same sweep. Hodger crosses his feet around his ankles. There it is. Almost. Second time we've been in this position in this match. Yes. Four thirty-five remaining. Bocchetti's balance is really amazing in these positions. As you watch the tape on him, he's always here. Very difficult to sweep. Yeah, incredible balance. And I wonder if if, if I'm just feeling the difference in weight now. We're right. 16 minutes in, 15 pound weight difference from this very aggressive 22 year old Czech Matt Black Belt. Half guard or quarter guard, I should say. So he's barely trapped in there. But, uh, it's not easy to see that foot from how the one trapping it. You see Bushesha here with the inside arm control. The bottom sleeve is controlled. And he'll look to pick that up and keep continue slicing his knee through. The difficulty here is he doesn't really have an underhook on the backside. Yeah, he's got control of the belt. Correct. We can see it from this angle. The camera's not on it now, but Bushesha's grabbing the pants, the pant lining, uh, or the pant lining. And now Bushesha is looking to step off the backside. Possibly try like a reverse half guard. There it is. 
Now either he's going to go for the legs or sit to pass off to the backside. It should be interesting. And comes back to the front. Back up. Yeah, these guys are working hard. Three minutes. Russia pulling guard, very interesting. You can expect Harger to get the party started here. Or finish, should I say. With the pass. He's only been really effective in his pass attempt standing up. Correct. Let's see if you see the same thing. Kabaka leading the crowd on. Minute 30 remaining. Rushesha with the cross grip and the tricep control. Two on one on the wrist. There goes Hajur again. There go for it. Looking to break the grip, Hajar with the lapel control at the center, and looking to work the knee straight down. Bouchesha with Nemopata, Hajar with the split. Wow. Bouchesha on, Rahul is on. A minute left. Unbelievable. Punching that elbow. Hajar has the S grip on the hands. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh, so careful. Careful. Oh, no, no. No. Hodger is in deep Hodger trouble his head right now. Hodger's head is slipping around the corner. Is it? Oh! Unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable oh. submission attempt. These guys, less than a minute left, putting it on the line. That was remarkable. I don't remember the last time Hodger was on the run like that. Very impressive. And the way he jumped on it, he didn't wait for the opportunity. No, just, from that scramble, we're looking at 15 seconds left. It. That was very interesting. To say the least. But again, equally amazing that Hajar stayed calm, cleared the head, turned the corner, turn, turn, turn. Everybody on their feet for that. The 2012 absolute world champion against the 10-time champion in, in Hodger Gracie. And gentlemen, make some Another amazing fight. That's why the world's best come here. Marcus Almeida Bouchesha, everyone. Incredible performance. 20 minutes in, 19 minutes in. A beautiful, 
armbar attempt. Bushesha, talk us through the match. What was your strategy going in? I think, first of all, I would like to say that for me was the biggest challenge of my life, you know, because when I started training Jiu-Jitsu, I remember I, I watched like Roger doing final of the open class already, you know. So for me, 10 years later, uh, opportunity to fight against him. So for me, you know, first of all, was um, feeling like great to the guys giving that opportunity, you know. It's not just because I won the world or not because of this. Because I am a big fan of him, you know. This guy won 10 times the world championship. So I know I didn't win, but I feel it, you know. I came here, I did my best, I tried, you know. He, he's freaking good, you know. <laughs> so I can't like try everything, you know, but you guys saw I tried a toe hole, was really tight. The iron bar was really tight, but I tried, you know, so I couldn't sweep me. He's amazing, so for me, I really feel, I'm feeling, you know, amazing, amazing feeling. For me, it was a really pleasure. Thanks, Jorge, for the fight. Bouchesh, everyone. Incredible. Roger, congratulations on the incredible, uh, the incredible match, 20 minutes. Talk us through some of the moments there, the foot lock, the arm lock, beautiful submission attempts. Tell us about it. Let me catch my breath here. <laughs> Let him catch his breath. Oh, okay. No, I think, you know, I, I didn't expect an easy fight, and hell for sure, there wasn't one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bushesha just, you know, he got nothing to prove. Uh, he just showed that he's a... Great athlete. You know, I never faced him before. Since I stopped competing the words, he's been killing everyone. And he just has shown me that, you know, if I don't train hard, I'm gonna get left behind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's not an excuse. You know, it was a great fight. The arm lock was really tight. I thought at some point it was gonna break, but I think I didn't come here to tap, you know, so. <laughs> but. Talk about the 20 minutes. Yeah, you know, the fighting 20 minutes is, a, you know, no points. It's a, just a very different strategy. I fought before 20 minutes, but uh, I got a unwelcome, a very big staph infection during my training. That took me away very close yeah, from the match. I couldn't train for 10 days. I took a lot of antibiotics, so my guess, mm. you know, I knew I was going to struggle a lot. So since uh, he escaped from side control, I know I had to play very smart. I was already out of breath. But you know, they, they cannot say the outcome of the fight. Maybe I was coming in the best shape of my fight. And he was going to tap me out in the mid. You know, and I, who knows? I'm just very not happy with myself that I, that I guess out. But you know, it happens. I, I said I was going to fight. You know, I didn't pull off. I know this is a, was a uh, amazing show, one of a kind, the first one. And, you know, I couldn't say 10 days before, I cannot come here, you know. Right. So I'm very happy winning or losing. I came to fight, you know. Thank you, Marcus Almeida, Bushesha, Roger Gracie, you guys. Incredible fight. We learned so much. Congratulations, guys. Amazing. deep thank you from the Metamoris family. There's plenty of places you could have been tonight, but you chose to make the journey and come here and be with us. So for that, we're truly, truly appreciative. The next event will be next year. Make sure you go to your browser at home, type in metamoris.com and bookmark that website. Event information will be coming. So on behalf of the Metamoris family and myself, Tony Torres, your host, thank you and good night.